Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This one's going out to our pal Glenn Tong, who caught me at the Injustice 2 panel at the San Diego Comic-Con. Thank you so much for being there, Glenn. This rundown is dedicated to you. It seems like every week there's a new batch of rumors about the Nintendo NX, and here are the latest. The upcoming Nintendo machine might be a cross between a stationary console like the Wii and a handheld platform like the 3DS. Citing unnamed sources, Eurogamer reports that the NX will essentially be a handheld system that you can take with you on the go, and then when you get home, you'll be able to connect it to a base station that turns it into a console for your TV. The site even claims to know what the NX will look like. It has a big touchscreen in the middle and detachable controllers on the side, kind of like a more elegant version of the Wii U gamepad. As for processing power, Eurogamer says that the NX will be very powerful by handheld standards, but a little underpowered when compared to consoles like the PS4 and Xbox One. These aren't the first rumors that the NX will have some sort of handheld capability, so it seems likely, but don't forget that Nintendo still hasn't revealed any official details. All we know right now is that the NX will launch in early 2017 alongside the new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. Third-party publishers like Ubisoft and 2K have also started making games, and they've publicly stated that they're very enthusiastic about the system. You don't need to spend any extra cash to explore the massive galaxy of No Man's Sky. The upcoming space exploration game will not require a PlayStation Plus subscription on the PS4. Most PS4 games make you purchase PlayStation Plus in order to play online, but Sony and developer Hello Games are skipping this for No Man's Sky. Speaking with Game Informer, a Sony representative said they're doing this because the universe of No Man's Sky is so big, you'll feel as though you're by yourself even when you're playing online. Makes sense. The game uses procedural generation to create new space and planets as you go, so you'll never have to explore the same place twice. No Man's Sky lands on the PC and PS4 in two weeks. It looks like Microsoft is trying to get rid of all their old Xbox Ones. The older version of the system has just got another price cut in the US, it's third in the last year. It will now cost just 250 bucks US, although the price in Canada is still holding at around 400 bucks, depending on what model or bundle you get. The new price cut on the older model comes just one week before the launch of the slimmer and sexier Xbox One S. The 500 gigabyte model of that hits stores on August 2nd, with the one terabyte version set to follow on August 23rd. As always, players will get to choose between several bundles with different games, but you might want to wait until next year. That's when Microsoft will release an even better version of the Xbox One, codenamed Project Scorpio. They're calling it the most powerful console ever, but that's pretty much all we know for now. One of the visionaries behind Star Wars may have helped shape the latest Star Trek vessel. Over the weekend at Comic-Con, CBS unveiled the new ship that will headline their upcoming TV series, Star Trek Discovery. It's a lot more geometric and pointy than most other Star Trek ships, and it's so different that it may have come all the way from the galaxy far, far away. Many websites have pointed out that the Discovery bears a striking resemblance to unused concept art created for the first Star Trek movie by none other than Ralph McQuarrie, who's best known for coming up with many of the designs for the original Star Wars trilogy. McQuarrie's concept art created in the late 1970s was for a potential refitted version of the original Enterprise, but it was rejected in favor of a less radical design. It looks like the makers of the new TV series are bigger fans of his work and have used it for inspiration. The Force Awakens was also inspired by a lot of unused McQuarrie concept art, so it's good to see that the late artist has seen a resurgence. What do you think of the new Star Trek ship? Let us know in the comments below. The show will beam onto the small screen early next year. Han Solo almost didn't survive The Force Awakens in real life. It looks like Harrison Ford's much publicized injury on the set of the new Star Wars movie may have been a lot more serious than originally suspected. During filming in England, Ford broke two bones in his left leg when the hydraulic door of the Millennium Falcon unexpectedly closed on him. It took him several months to recover, but it could have been much worse. The production company behind the shoot has just pleaded guilty to two health and safety violations stemming from the accident, with British prosecutors alleging that Harrison Ford could have easily been killed. The only thing that saved his life was the hydraulic door's emergency stop button, which was thankfully activated just in time. Harrison Ford dying on the set of the new Star Wars movie would have been terrible news to say the least, so we're obviously very relieved that it didn't happen. 
Thankfully, the injury hasn't appeared to slow him down. He's set to begin filming the fifth Indiana Jones movie soon. Have I ever not delivered for you before? Yeah. And we might be seeing a lot more of the new Han Solo. Earlier this month, Disney confirmed rumors that Hail Caesar actor Alden Ehrenreich will play a young Han in the character's upcoming Solo movie. Now it looks like the movie won't be flying solo after all. The New York Daily News reports that Disney is interested in making no less than three young Han Solo films. The studio is apparently very excited about the new movie, just like all of us, and they're leaving the storylines open to be explored in future adventures. Aaron Reich is reportedly contracted for three films, which is normal in Hollywood, so Disney can make it happen whenever they want. Keep in mind that no official announcements about a Han Solo trilogy have been made. For now, the only film that's been confirmed is the first one. It will begin filming soon and hit theaters in 2018. And that does it for us today. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back with a brand new rundown tomorrow. Sorry about the mess. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.